Today is Monday, September 13. I'm Pastor Michael, and this is Wilderness Wanderings. Our text is Deuteronomy 12, 4. You must not worship the Lord your God the way those nations worship their gods. Our text requires us to stop and ponder. It's the kind of instruction which needs quiet reflection. Here's why. Israel was coming out of Egypt and going into the Promised Land. For 400 years, they had watched the Egyptians worship their gods. Now they were going into new territory where the gods were worshipped differently. Since there was no established worshipping tradition in Israel, it would be natural to worship God by imitating the Egyptians or to adopt some of the practices they would see in Canaan. But Moses says, don't do that. Do not adopt the religious practices of the nations around you. It is a word we need to hear as well. No, I'm not suggesting that we currently follow Egyptian or Canaanite worship practices, but I am suggesting that we pick up bad practices along the course of our lives. Let me suggest some ways, but you will need to ponder your own life to determine if you worship God well. While Pastor Anthony was on sabbatical, I used Romans 12 as my preaching text. It begins by telling us to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. This is the right way to worship. Don't live like the world does. Doesn't that sound like Moses in our text? Some of us still limit our religion to Sundays. If we give God time on Sundays and maybe a few quick prayers during the week, God should be happy with us. Proper worship of God, as they say, is really 24-7. This also reminds me of Isaiah 58, in which the prophet tears a strip off Israel. They are going through all the proper motions of worship at the temple, but once they leave, they return to their unholy living. Their business practices and personal relationships are rooted in evil. They have no concern for living justly. The same can be true of us. We turn away from the poor and ignore the calls to live more stewardly on this earth. We fail to acknowledge that natural disasters always have the greatest negative impact on the poor. The Bible is quite clear. God will not accept worship from people that ignore the plight of the needy. We can get all the rituals and traditions right, but if our hearts do not pulse with the mercy of God, then all our worship is just smoke and mirrors. God hates it. Amos 5.21 JFK is famous for his line, Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. We do well to rephrase this for our relationship with the church and its worship services. Of course, we all ought to benefit from being part of a Christian community. But if our primary motivation is to get something out of the church and our worship services, the church will disappoint. Our motive ought to be, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20.35. So how do we worship God properly? As Paul says, in view of God's mercy, we approach God because he has already come to us in Jesus. The only appropriate response to an act of such mercy is awe and thanksgiving. Among the many themes that show up in Christian worship services, these ought to stand out. We do not worship to get something from God. He has already given us everything. Rather, by worshiping him, we respond to his goodness. The Christian life is worship 24-7. In view of God's mercy, we offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is our true and proper worship. As you journey on, go with the blessing of God. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.